Pro, uh, Isaiah <clears throat> chapter 61, 2 Peter, 61st book of the Bible. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This ought to be interesting. Or Luke chapter 4, 18 and 19. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day, well, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Let me close the book, put it down, and talk to people. And they were astonished. That comma, in verse 2, the pro, the proclaimed the acceptable year of the Lord, comma, that comma separates the two advents. That comma, Jesus stopped and put the book down. Verse 1 is the first advent and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all that mourn is the second advent that comma is how many years the spirit of the Lord God is upon me so the Holy Spirit is upon the Lord Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry because the Lord has anointed me. Not only is he anointed, he's called the Christ, the anointed one. He is the anointed one, and he is anointed to preach good tidings. Good tidings is the good news, the gospel. That's what gospel means, good news. Unto the meek. He didn't preach it to the Pharisees, the Sadducees. The pilot, because they weren't meek, they were prideful, they were in their own ways. Very few heard him. And those that did hear him didn't hear what he said. How come the, the disciples are up in the upper room when, he, when he's crucified and buried? Oh, what are we going to do? Oh, what are we going to do? He told you what was going to happen. Just wait three days. And the third day came along, and Mary comes up and tells, Hey, I've seen Jesus. They don't believe her. Luke 4, 16, John 1, 35, 1 John 2, 22, Psalms 2, 2, Acts 4, 25. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. The realm of the people that were under the religious persecution of the Jews, man, they were broken. They didn't know what to do. To proclaim liberty to the captives. Captives under the bond of religion. Under the bonds of Satan. Under the bonds of man. Christ came to set them free. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come unto me, ye that are heavy laden. Take my yoke. It's easy. Imagine a guy having to carry a yardstick to figure out how far he's got to go, according to the scribes and Pharisees. Taking some grain in your fingertips and rubbing it to get this, oh, that's, that's working on the Sabbath. You know, they accused Jesus of, of doing things on the, What did he do on the Sabbath? Well, he healed people. What did he do? All he did was spoke the word. He did no physical activity. So you're trying to tell me the Pharisees are saying you can't even speak on the Sabbath? Where do you find that in the law? You know, God told Joshua to march around the city. You can't find where God told Joshua not to say nothing. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. They were bound in their sin. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's what he did. He came proclaiming the Father. 
Kama. And the day of vengeance of our God has not happened yet. To comfort all that mourn. What are they going to be mourning for? Oh, hey, they're coming out of the tribulation period. They're just seeing their families destroyed who didn't want anything to do with God. The great white throne judgment, we're going to see our family members cast into hell eternally. You bury a loved one and you believe they're lost. You don't see them going to hell. You, you just believe it. Great white throne judgment, you will see God tell them to go to hell. Well, I should lick the fire. Then the Bible says in chapter 21 of Revelation, then our tears will be wiped away. To point unto them that mourn in Zion. That's all Zion has been. Except for the time of Solomon and David. Even David. He's got to run out because Absalom's taken over the authority. Only really under Solomon were things right. And even then he got into all his wise and the false worship of gods. And even then there were problems. Jerusalem has just been a veil of tears for the Jews. To give unto them beauty for ashes. And ashes were just a sign of mourning. Destruction. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. See, to give oil, for, to give beauty for ashes. Take the ashes that they're, they're, they're putting on their heads and sitting and, and, and repenting and, and, and sorrow and, and trying to get right with God. I'll give you beauty. And you mean looking beautiful and all that? No, but go, read, go read what Proverbs 31 says about beauty. It's her that feareth the Lord. They're going to fear the Lord according to Proverbs 31. They're not fearing God today, so what do they get? They get ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. Oh, the double mourning, because you saw mourning in Zion. Now, for their complete, utter distress, here's some oil of joy. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. A garment of praise. For what? For the spirit of heaviness. All these burdens that we're just, just, just living in. And all the problems that we're going through. Well here's a garment of praise. Hallelujah. That they might be called. Trees of righteousness. You read Psalms chapter 1. The planting of the Lord. You mean that's the garden of Eden. The garden that the Lord planted. That he might be glorified. And there will be never ever be again the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Ever again. That tree is gone. So Israel is likened to trees. Israel is likened to a, a vineyard. They shall build the old wastes. Like Nehemiah did. So ne Ezra and Nehemiah is going to happen all over again. And you know what? Like Moses, they got to start from scratch all over. They got to rebuild, but they got to do it all over again. In Ezra and Nehemiah, they had the materials that Babylon took that Nebuchadnezzar put in the storehouse, all except the Ark of the Covenant. Now they have nothing unless the Lord reveals to them, but they ain't got nothing. Now, I don't know the bowls and the tables and that. I don't know if they're somewhere ever. To be found. They shall raise up the former desolation. The places that are just desolate. Nothing. 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 That's what Israel is today. You go over there. It's a nothing. Nothing. Can you imagine what Israel looked like. Jerusalem looked like in the days of Solomon. Before he sinned. When he built that temple. That the queen of Sheba came. And just stood in awe.
Why is Israel and Jerusalem the way it is today? Why is that sin? You ever wonder how even a place in America, Arizona, California, Death Valley, Nevada, you ever wonder why those places just, I mean, America, in that realm, it, it, there's beautiful places. But here's this one area, it is just dead. Dead Valley. There had to have been something that, probably the Native Americans or the Mexicans, something had to be there that they just defiled God. California is going there right now because this nation has defiled God. Not giving them water. And for their orchards and for their for their lands of crops and all that, they're stealing water now. Or accused of stealing water. They shall repair the waste cities. That's what the area is today. It's a wasted city. Desolation of many generations. Look at that comma, verse 2. It's been many generations. Titus went in there and sacked the place totally in 70 AD. Destroyed it utterly. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. John chapter 10. He says to hire them. He says, I'm the, I'm the shepherd. You're the sheep. But there will be hirelings taken care of. The sons of the alien. Now that's people who are not Jews. That's not, you know, outer space. E.T. phone home. That's people who are not of the land. We call people who come to America aliens. And that's not even a good term for the word. You really can't call Mexican aliens or illegal aliens because Mexicans were here before the Europeans were here. All you did is draw an imaginary line in on a map somewhere. Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, California were Mexican areas that they could travel back and forth freely. But let's not get into those politics. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your fine dresser. You're going to have Gentiles doing your work. That's, how not, that's not how it was in Exodus. The Jews were doing the work for the Gentiles. In the book of Judges, Israel was doing things and the Philistines and all the lands around it would come and reap up the, the good and the harvest. Gideon had to thresh wheat in secret. Or barley, whatever he was growing in secret. So the enemy wouldn't get hold of it. During uh, King Saul and Joshua, I mean King Saul and Jonathan's time. No one had a weapon but Saul and Jonathan. The Philistines had made it so hard that he allowed them to have files for their farm tools but nothing else. But things are going to change. Listen, the United Nations really control Israel today. Israel sells herself for a peace that's not going to happen. They keep moving their borders. You know, if you move your borders for this group of people, we'll help you out. And they move their borders and they get no help. One day the nation is going to bow down before the Jew. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. That's the nation themselves. I don't, not just the Levites, but the people. The restoration of Israel. And that's not today. Men shall call you the ministers of our God. They're not called that today. Baptist preachers have taken over were ministers. Other religions have taken over the title of ministers. Roman Catholic Church has taken the name of priest and other religions. 
They have stolen the name from Israel. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory, the Gentiles shall ye boast yourselves, Jews. For your shame ye shall have double. They're getting shame. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. They're actually going to get all the land that's their land. is not going to be given to no Gentiles. They will have the entire coast of the Mediterranean Sea to the Jordan River, if not even further. There will be no PLO. For I, the Lord, love judgment. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. You're robbing the people so you can bring your your peace offering, your burnt offering. Give me that lamb. Why? Because I gotta give it to the Lord. Why don't you give one of your own? That's the illustration that that Nathan gave David. Here's a guy. He's got one little lamb, and and, and he's tender and loves it and all that. And the lamb loves him. And this rich man, and all that. He had this kind, and he stole the lamb. Proverbs 28, 24, Mark 7, 10 through 13. I will direct their work in truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Now, how can an everlasting covenant mean God's all done with them? What kind of everlasting is that? And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. Not as a joke. Jews, you know a joke today. I mean, you know a Jew today. It's probably a joke. Their offspring among the people, and all that see them shall acknowledge them. That's a Jew. They are ministers. Of our God. They are priests. Of the Lord. You better treat that guy with respect. Why? He's Jewish. And they shall. And they are the seed. Which the Lord has blessed. Past tense. Even though this hasn't happened yet. Since that common chapter. Since that common verse 2. All the way down. This is all future. And God says it's already happened. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. What do you rejoice in? What makes you happy? My soul shall be joyful in my God. What makes you joy? What gives you joy? For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. The armor. Once you're saved, you get armor. Some don't believe they're saved. Some people lose it. Why? Because you didn't put the armor on. You don't use it. You don't keep it clean. You don't even know where it belongs and how it goes. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. You know, the robe of the Lord Jesus Christ, they took off. They put on a purple robe, a Roman robe, and mocked him. And then they took that robe off and put his garment on him. And when they brought him to the cross, they took off his robe and they shot dice for it. Or whatever how they gambled. But oh, when Jesus died at that moment, went into hell, deposited my sins, and then went up to the Father, I guarantee, as the prodigal son came back to the Father, Oh, I bet you there was a ring. I bet you there was a robe. And I bet you there was shoes. And I bet you there was a great celebration that has not yet ended. 
Bible says when one sinner comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, all the angels in heaven rejoice. As a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. So there's an outfit for every cause. When a bride would put on her bridal, that doesn't mean she's going to go out and, and uh, work the rose bushes. It wouldn't be every day that a, that a man would wear a bridegroom outfit. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, spring, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, spring into summer, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. So the fruit of the Lord Jesus Christ it's righteousness and praise. And you match that with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, and I'll tell you what a blessed event you're going to have. <laughs>